Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to show you the bow hold, how I teach it. Later in the video I'm going to go on the discussion about the Franco-Belgian and the Russian bow hold. So stay tuned if you want to know my opinion about that and I'm going to promise you that I am going to bust some myths. I could now start and tell you the position of every finger on the bow. Like starting with a thumb, telling you it has to be in a round position, then placing the two fingers around there approximately to the metal, then placing your little finger on top of the stick so it can slip in either direction but handle a little bit of pressure and then place your index finger around between the first and the second joint on the stick and there you have your bow hold. Now I did it but what I'm actually going to tell you and to show you is the simplicity of the bow hold. This is a especially important if you are a violent teacher or if you want to understand why we hold this bow the way we do. Imagine our hand is like we grab an apple and then we let the apple fall on the ground and then our fingers are just relaxed in this position. We let our hand hang like this as natural as possible. Then we place our bow so that the little finger stays on top of the stick and all the other fingers just lay around the stick like that. And then our thumb goes into the correct position on the other side of the stick from a little bit under the stick in a round way like that. So what I wanted to show you is something what I learned when teaching small children. Very often I see teachers use this kind of bow hold for small children so that they can handle the bow better. In my experience starting with this kind of bow hold is actually not the best idea. In some cases it might be a good idea but in most cases it is better to learn the correct bow hold from the start and as I showed you the natural position of the hand leads you to the right position from the fingers on the bow. So what I do is I let my students if they don't get when I explain put the finger right here, put the fingers right here, put the finger right here, the finger right here. If they can't do that that well I let them just hang their hand like this put the bow into the correct position which is the little finger on top of the stick and the other fingers just hanging around in the natural position like this. Then of course we make the fingers flexible and we bend our thumb and go to the stick here on the other side of the middle finger. Boom! It's very simple. It's not very complicated. The bow hold is not something you had to stretch your fingers in or something which is very unnatural. So now you have learned the two ways how to position the fingers on the bow. Let me now explain to you what tasks the fingers have. Let us start with the index finger. What the index finger can do is he can apply pressure to the stick and we achieve that pressure ideally not from the finger but with a forearm rotation. This is especially important when we want to play a forte at the tip. As you can see right here I apply pressure through the index finger with a forearm rotation of my right arm of course. And you can see here the stick is bending. Another very important task of the index finger is the control of the direction of the bow. For example if we have the bow deeper in the hand our bow goes slightly behind our head. If we have the bow too loose with the index finger and grab it with the tip our bow has the tendency to slip like that. The tip goes in front of us which is both not good because we want to play parallel to the bridge and not like this or like this. The middle finger has a quite simple task which is he works as an opposite force for the thumb and basically the middle finger is a rotation point for the other fingers as well. It's not the only finger who is the rotation point. It shares that with the ring finger but that's the main task of the middle finger on the bow. It's a rotation point and it works some kind of like a hinge for the whole hand. The ring finger shares its tasks with the little finger and also with the middle finger. It shares the task of the control of the rotation or being the hinge of the hand and the counterpoint of the thumb on the bow with the middle finger but it also shares some tasks from the little finger which is for example the handling of the pressure of the bow. We can also do that with that finger but when I lift this finger basically all the 
weight of the tip of the bow drops. So we handle a little bit of weight and also direction of the bow together with the index finger with our ring finger. It's a quite important finger on the bow because as you can see it controls the direction of the bow and also takes part in the weight distribution of the bow. So when we lift the bow like this, especially important at the frog, then it's always a shared task of the ring finger and the little finger. The position of the little finger is not really easy to find because it has to be on top of the stick so that the little finger doesn't slip. I would suggest to you to place it a little bit on the hand inside side to not slip too easily in this direction which you can see with many violinists who place the little finger a little too far like this and they end up in this position because they can't control the bow with the fingertip of the little finger. What the little finger does is actually a quite simple task. He controls really mainly the weight distribution of the bow. As you can see right here, when I press down with my little finger, the tip goes up. And also, if I lift my little finger, I basically lose control over the weight of the bow. But as I said before, the little finger shares the task of the weight distribution together with the ring finger. Let's talk about the thumb. The thumb is actually a very important finger on the bow because it has to work like an counterpoint for every other finger. The thumb's main task is to balance the bow on its tip and also to act like a counter pressure for the other fingers. And I always say the flexibility of your other fingers is determined by how flexible your thumb is in the bow hold. So if your thumb is locked like this, your other fingers will have a hard time moving as well. Even if I try to move them, it's quite limited the range which I can move them in. That is why you see people with a not so flexible thumb ending up in this kind of position where they have to use their wrist to compensate for the board direction. The thumb should be right beneath the frog at the wood of the stick and going to the stick one could say with its fingernail. If you have short fingernails you can really go with the tip of your thumb at the stick and you should. The three other fingers lay on the other side and the little finger stands on top of the bow. Let me now show you some basic exercises for the bow which can help you develop your finger muscles in the correct finger position on the bow. The first is an exercise which I learned when I was very young in one of my first violin lessons and I find it very funny. It's called the ant. Let's imagine our, our hand is the ant and it creeps up the stick but all fingers stay in the correct position like this. We don't want to do that fast. I always see students going like, like this. We go step by step until we reach the top of the stick like this. And now we go into the opposite direction. And we always keep in mind that our thumb is bent and our little finger is with the tip on the stick. And now we push the bow back into the position where we in the end will play. So this can take a while. The more careful you do it, the more time it takes. I would suggest to you to in the beginning use a soft underground for this exercise so that your bow doesn't fall on the ground and gets destroyed. This is a really really effective exercise in the beginning to train your fingers in the correct bow hold. Let me now show you the barrier exercise. The barrier exercise is quite funny to do if you are a teacher with a student. You can do two barriers, one in front of yourself and your students stands in front of you and makes the other barrier. And this is a barrier where a train can drive through if the barrier is down. And then we lift, of course, with our correct finger position, with the little finger on the top of the stick. We lift the barrier slowly until we reach the vertical position. And now, of course, the cars can drive through and then another train comes and then we have to lower our barrier or our barriers if you do it with a student again. The more slowly we do this, the more efficient is it for our training of the little finger. If this exercise is too hard for your little finger, if it feels painful, you can go a little bit up the bow with the same 
correct finger positions and do the same exercise again a little bit closer to the balance point of the bow so that your little finger has a little less weight to move. Don't worry too much about holding the bow horizontally in the air because most of the time the strings will carry the weight of the bow. Still it is good and necessary to train the little finger that he can sustain this movements. Let's talk a little bit about the different schools of bow holds. That was what I showed you, the Franco-Belgian bow hold. Let me now show you how close it actually is to the so-called Russian bow hold. And also I want to tell you what is not the Russian bow hold, which it's actually sometimes labeled by very famous violinists as the Russian bow hold, which I don't think it is. So when you talk about the Franco-Belgian bow hold, you have the index finger going around the stick between the first and the second joint of your index finger. If you talk about the Russian bow hold, we go deeper into the hand and land between these two joints in our index finger. When we do that movement, we go around the stick more with the index finger. We have some other things which we have to compensate. For example, our little finger has to be a little bit more in a stretched position and our thumb as well. We have it a little bit more leaning towards the index finger. I have to say that there are some great, great violinists out there who actually claim to use the Russian bow hold, but I will now prove them wrong. What the Russian bow hold and the Franco-Belgian bow hold have in common is that every finger is like a bumper on a car, flexible, like movable. Regardless if you are more around the stick with your index finger or if you are like in the Franco-Belgian bow hold between the first and the second joint of your finger on the stick, like in the Franco-Belgian bow hold. What should not change is the thumb position, which has to be a flexible one. And flexible means bending in this direction. And also what should not happen is that we collapse the joints right here in the little finger. And this collapsing of the little finger and the, the straightening of the thumb like this is actually just nothing else as a bad habit. Some violinists I said before are at the top level and they can get away with this. What they have to do when they play like this with the thumb like that straightened and also the collapsed joints of the little finger, they have to compensate with the wrist. That's why you see some of those violinists which have this finger straight play more like this. And when you see people who play with the Franco-Belgian bow hold, the wrist is much lower. But also people who play in the Russian bow hold can have the wrist quite low if they still maintain this flexibility in the joints of the little finger and especially in the thumb as well. The flexibility of the thumb determines if the other fingers are also flexible. So why is it that some great violinists get away with those things? In the end it is important that you move your bow on the violin in a parallel way to the bridge. I will go into that in the later videos. If you use the Franco-Belgian bow hold correctly, you can adjust the direction of the bow mainly from the fingers. You can see that I adjust my bow direction from the fingers when you look at my wrist. My wrist barely moves and especially when I go back to the frog, my wrist doesn't move very much. If you now have bad habits like a straight little finger or a straight thumb or both, which oftentimes come together, and I now go to the tip, I have to straighten my arm in a very awkward position and then I go back to the frog and look at my wrist, how much I have to compensate to keep the bow fairly straight. So the essence of my rant is that the Russian bow hold and the Franco-Belgian bow hold are actually quite similar. They are actually the same hold with a little bit of variables, but they are not as different as some people claim them to be. And now people starting to implement the bad habits, which are explained uh, and demonstrated by because they think they are now in the Russian bow hold, which is not the case. The Russian bow hold still have flexible fingers and a bent thumb. What is it now the difference between the Russian bow hold and the Franco-Belgian bow hold? With the Russian bow hold, you achieve a little bit more force in the index finger because you have a direct force translation from your forearm into your index finger. So what you can do now is that you put your fingers closer together 
and still have a quite strong grip on the string and you can play forte at the tip. The advantage of having your fingers closer together is that you have more flexibility in the end, especially if you have your round finger positions. When you now go to the Franco-Belgian bow hold, you have to spread your fingers a little bit more to regain the same control because you have here one joint more. So the rotation pressure, which comes from the forearm on the string, is now a little bit softer in opposite of when I have my ground joint of the index finger applying the pressure. To compensate for that, with the Franco-Belgian bow hold, we spread our fingers more. And with the Russian bow hold, we have them closer together. That brings me to a very general point. When you have the feeling of losing control over your bow, when you have your bow jumping like this, then you should spread your fingers on the bow more to have more control. But if you feel stiff, especially in the extreme positions like at the tip and at the frog, if you feel stiff there, then you can experiment with putting your fingers a little bit closer together. That is a rule regardless of the terms Russian or Franco-Belgian bow hold. So I hope this video helped you. I taught you now the bow hold like I teach it. It is actually a quite natural thing. It's not very complicated. Also, if you want to learn something for the future, stay tuned and see you guys in the next video.